Hey guys, this is Henry from Albedia again. Today we're going to keep working on our Pro Tools series of videos. And on the last um, videos and tutorials that we, we demonstrated, uh, we were talking about how to configure a uh, MIDI controller in Pro Tools, how to configure your interface, your playback engine, and so on and so forth. Basic configurations that you, you should and you must do before you start working in Pro Tools. Now we're going to go one step ahead and we're going to go ahead and work on our preferences window. This is a very important window because, and I'm going to try to explain it as an, uh, with an analogy, okay? Let's say you buy a new car, okay? You buy your new car and the first thing you do, you set up your mirrors correctly. Maybe you move the seat a little bit to the front, maybe a little bit to the back. Maybe you'll be, you know, playing with the height of your steering wheel. And basically, you're going to be you're going to be modifying the way your car works so that you feel comfortable when you drive, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing with the preferences window. We're going to configure Pro Tools to operate and label things and show things the way we like them. So um, when we are recording, when we're mixing, when we're editing, the whole operation, the whole working in Pro Tools feels easier and smoother to us as users, okay? So here we go. Uh, if you want to open your Pro Tools Preferences window, you can just go to Setup Preferences. So as you can see, there's several tabs here uh, under the Preferences window. Today we're going to be talking on the of the Display tab um, of your Preferences window. This is the first tab that you're going to be uh, looking at. Um, and here we go. So as you can see, there's three main sections here. There's the basic section, the warnings and dialogues, and the color coding section of the display tab of your preferences window. When you see these um, sections, basically, you know, if you see things like color coding, then these are all color related display preferences. Okay. If you see warnings and dialogues, everything you'll see here has to deal with some kind of warnings, some kind of dialogues. Okay. Basically, it's the way Pro Tools displays things for you, for the user. So let's start here with the basics. A couple of things here. Uh, the first option here says track position number stay uh, with hidden track. So basically, if this is on, which by default it is, and I encourage you to leave it on, uh, the tracks that are hidden, uh, they'll keep the same uh, position number. Then you have tooltips, function, and details. When these are on, your tooltips will show uh, functions and details of what, what you're pointing at. Okay. Uh, you got things like the edit window default length. This is set to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's the default. And the maximum, it can go all the way up to 24 hours. Now, I encourage you to leave these four, um, or I recommend you to leave these four options default just the way they are. Now, here's one that is really important, and I think you're going to like it. Uh, this is really good when you're mixing. So it says organize plugin main use by. And then you got four options. You can do flat list, category and manufacturer, or category and manufacturer. Um, I don't think by default Pro Tools selects category and manufacturer, but I believe that's probably what you want to have. Uh, what this does is that when you're looking at your plugins menu, you can see them by category, like uh, you'll see things like dynamics or reverbs and then inside dynamics you're going to see all your dynamics uh, plugins and then reverbs you're going to see all your reverb plugins but you can also look by manufacturer so if you don't remember exactly if this plugin is a dynamic or or a harmonic or modulation related plugin maybe you can remember by the manufacturer by the brand the company that makes them so and i'm going to explain that um, right now I have it selected that way and really quick i'll show you if I try to add a plugin here, you can see here's the categories, EQ, Dynamics, and so on and so forth. But I also have here the companies, okay, the manufacturers. So I could I could either go and say, you know, like Dynamics, and then select one of these Dynamics plugins. Or if I don't remember exactly, I could just go to Manufacturer, like let's say Avid, and then look for the Avid plugin that I'm looking for, okay? So that's I think that's really useful. Um, when you're mixing. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, organize track IO main use by. I typically leave that default, which is type. Uh, I typically leave the auto switch input language off, even though my language is English in Pro Tools. And that's basically the 
basics area of the display tab. Now you have warnings and dialogues. So a couple things here. Uh, show dashboard window when Pro Tools starts. I have that checked so that every time I open Pro Tools by default, the dashboard window will open and it's going to ask me whether I want to open an existing session or I want to create a new session. I like that to happen every time I open it. But if you don't like it, you can turn that off. And when you open Pro Tools, it'll open, but no windows will pop. And you're basically going to have to go file, create new, or maybe file open if you're going to open an, a pre-existing session. I like that on. Now, you can also reset the don't show this again settings. Because when this dashboard window shows, if you don't like it anymore, you can just do don't show this again and it won't happen again. But if you want to see it back again, you can just reset that. And now, color coding. I believe this is the most important area of the display tab of your preferences window. A um, couple options here. Always display marker colors. I like that on. And I think you should have that on either. You should have that on too. Sorry. Why? Uh, markers are they're actually easier to see when they have different colors and I'm going to demonstrate that now as you can see I have some markers here I have a start, I have a countdown, intro, course 1, v2 as you can see they're different colors so you know when you're scrolling through the session it's easier to see the colors when you scroll fast you know okay there's a difference between this section and this one because there's different color right now, if you have that off, check what happens. Now, you don't have any colors. So, if you're scrolling fast, you might not see what's going on. You might not recognize there's a difference between a part and another one. So, I typically leave that on. Now, MIDI note color shows velocity. That's another good one. If you're working on MIDI, like here, I'm going to go ahead and open this track here. As you can see, I have three MIDI notes in, on this piano roll. You see they're all red because the track is labeled as, it's kind of like, yeah, I guess you could say red or like dark orange. Uh, but check this out. They're all red, but they have different, I guess, tones, you could say. This one is kind of darker, and this one is kind of lighter. And that's associated to the velocity, and you can see it here. This note is the highest velocity, so it's the darkest red. While this note here it's lighter because it's a lower velocity. You can see it here on the velocity um, bars here. And then this one in the middle, it's kind of in the middle of the velocity. So it's not like super light nor super dark red. It's kind of in the middle. So that'll help you uh, recognize that there's different um, velocities within your MIDI performance. Okay. Let's go back to preferences. And now the last one that I have here. It's the default track color coding and then default clip color coding. So the way I do this, um, when I do, and this this is not the way I normally do it, so I'm going to go ahead and change it. Uh, I typically leave the default track color coding as none. So when I create a track, they're basically all black. Okay, Every single thing I create, it's black by default. Now the default clip color coding that means the color that the clip is going to have, which doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the track, I do make it track color. That way, if I create a track, and I cre uh, let's say I create it, and by default it's going to be none, so the track is not going to have any color, it's going to be black. So I create a track, it's going to be black, then it changed the color, say to green. If I create something and record something, then the clip is also going to be green. Now you can see it here like this overhead track. It's blue, the clip is blue. Actually, all my drum tracks are blue. And you can see the track is blue, but also the uh, clip is blue. This black track here, it's black, the clip is black. You know, these, uh, I guess, brass one and brass two, they're like, I guess you could say light brown, and then the clip is also light brown. That's a, that's a, that's an easy way for you to um, associate visually uh, what you're working with. Now, when you have different track colors and clip colors, and this looks like a, a beach ball, and it's all different colors, it's hard, especially when you're mixing and when you're trying to find things within the session, to find them because they're all different. So I encourage you to label and color code your tracks as soon as you create them. 
Let's see what else we have here. And that's it. So uh, that's your display tab of your preferences window. As you can see, and as I said before, this is all about making the program operate and work the way you're comfortable. Okay, these are just my recommendations. You could do it the way you want. Okay, this is up totally up to you. But once again, what you're trying to do is that you're trying to make the program work the way you feel comfortable. So when you're actually recording, you're actually mixing, editing, mastering, um, you're not fighting against the program. You want the program to make it easier for you. So all of these little tweaks and color coding and things like that, these little um, functions and, and uh, uh, check boxes and things like that, the idea is that it helps you work faster. That's the whole thing about audio. You want to be able to um, work fast when you're with a client and work good, you know. So there you go. Uh, display tab of your preferences window. Uh, follow us in our next tutorial because we're going to be working on the next um, tabs here on your preferences window. Okay. Well, I hope you guys liked it and we'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Today's pro audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your pro audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.